Pizza here. Zola! 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 And he's got the shot and he scored! Greetings, welcome back to Couch Critic. Dennis P, still sitting here on my couch, Museum Chelsea Football Club. Now before I get into that self hand and preview, could you please do me a big favor and hit that like button, that subscribe button, and if you're a real bad man, you will hit that bell notification button to keep up with the latest and the newest. Okay, let's get right into it. Chelsea versus Southampton up at St. Mary's. Chelsea coming into the game undefeated with five wins from seven, and Southampton coming into the game sitting just above the relegation zone, taking five points from their seven games. Last time these two teams met up at St. Mary's, it was Chelsea emerging the victors, but if you remember correctly, it wasn't as straightforward. Uh, Southampton went up 2-0, and if it were not for a late substitution of Olivier Giroud, Chelsea would have lost that game. If you remember, Chelsea scored three goals in eight minutes. Uh, Olivier Giroud header, Eden Hazard equalizer, and then again, Olivier Giroud inside the 18 to steal all three points. Now clearly the connotation from the last match is completely different from the one we're going to see at the weekend. Southampton were in a real relegation battle and could ill afford to drop three points at home. And Chelsea were coming off the backs of two very disappointing home fixtures, a 1-1 draw to West Ham. Of course, that soul-sucking 3-1 loss to the Spurs. Now, I haven't watched a lot of Southampton play this year. I did see the game against Liverpool and it's very hard to discern what they're actually trying to accomplish. I mean, traditionally, they do play a 4-4-2 with Shane Long playing off of Danny Ings. But against Liverpool, they did play a 4-1-4-1 and later switched to a 3-4-3, which made it very difficult to discern whether or not they're trying to look for more offensive opportunities or defend more. With a back three, you can now send a defender to go with Firmino and still have protection in the back as well as support on the wings. The tactic did seem to work, but unfortunately for Southampton, the game was already out of reach with them being down 3-0 at the half. Now, if I'm a betting man, I'm going to wager that Sparky plays a 4-1-4-1 this weekend, mainly because it is a tactic they've used in the past. They've trained it. They have an understanding of what they want to get out of it. They used it against Liverpool. And also because Chelsea played against a 4-1-4-1 a couple weeks ago against West Ham and failed to find a, find a breakthrough in that game. If this tactic is employed, I do expect former Chelsea player Oriol Romeo to come into the game and play in just in front of the defense in that anchor role and to be supported in the engine room by Emil Hoiberg and also Mario Lamina. And that would make for a pretty industrious midfield as none of those guys are light touches. They do get after it and then will go in with some aggression on some of those challenges. So I do expect Southampton to play with a certain amount of aggression. Certainly not at the same level as say somebody like Newcastle, but they do possess some, some size in the back. Vestergaard, 6'6", I do believe, and also Hoot, who's also 6'4". So they do have some size and physicality, and I do expect them to employ that in this match. Now, I was going to name Emil Hoiberg as their danger man this week, but having seen that Danny Ng scored midweek, I am going to give it to him. He does possess pace and power to get in behind our defense and is clinical once he's in the box. He's good in the air as well. Uh, and uh, surprisingly has decent pace. So it's something that we're going to have to be cognizant of and make sure that they don't give him too many opportunities because he can't hurt you. So what does Chelsea have to do well in order to be successful in this particular fixture? Well, for me, it has to be they have to run the channels well and finding space in, in between the center back and the full back and using that to their advantage. So the likes of Hazard, William or Pedro, whoever starts out of those two, um, Giroud, uh, Alonso, uh, maybe not Aspilicueta, but maybe somebody like uh, Conte. They have to use that space well because from what I've noticed, uh, that is an area where Southampton is exploitable. And in particular, they're right and our left. So the area between Vestergaard and Cedric. Uh, Vestergaard is big and burly and whatnot, but doesn't necessarily move very effectively and is susceptible to like one, twos, combination, quick combination. So it's that particular area that I think Chelsea can look to exploit. Now, as of late, Chelsea have been overly relying on Hazard's incredible run of form to get them over the line and get them out of the jail. But if they truly want to be considered title contenders, they're going to have to get goals from other areas on the pitch. So the likes of Pedro, William, Drew, Morata, Alonso, Kovacic, Barkley, uh, Jorginho, all of these guys have to find a way to make themselves more useful on the pitch in terms of goal scoring. Now, in my opinion, it's going to require about 80 to 85 goals to be considered title contenders this year. Liverpool scored 84 last year, and of course, we had Man City score 105. So even to even be considered a title contender, you need at least 80 goals, and we have to get them from other areas. 
an area where Chelsea may look to improve in order to get their goal tally up again is set pieces. They had 18 corners against Vidi in the midweek and took none of them. And it's an area where, coincidentally, Southampton is actually pretty poor in. So we'd expect Chelsea to at least get some goal scoring opportunities from there and hopefully he can take a few. The midweek game against Vidi did leave a few questions to be asked about the starting 11 for Sunday. Now, of course, you expect Hazard to come in and claim his throne on the left, but on the right, William and Pedro both did play significant minutes. But the more interesting question is going to be in the central midfield area. I expected Ross Barkley to start against Vidi in the midweek and sorry surprised us all by playing Kovacic a full 90 in his stead. Maybe Maurizio's already made up his mind and plans to start Ross Barkley instead of Kovacic and allow Kovacic to come in the second half to deputize. I mean, I know I'm predicting a KG affair. I don't expect to be much in it uh, with Chelsea possibly squeezing a 1-0, 2-1, 2-0 kind of game. But it won't be easy, and maybe that's maybe that's what Sari's thinking. He's thinking we need some energy in the second half. The likes of Kovacic and maybe even somebody like Morata, who's scored scored midweek, and hopefully can use that as a, a catalyst to carry on to uh, you know inflict some sort of like damage in the second half. And yes, I may be in the minority in this one, but I do believe Morata may have a role to play in this particular fixture mainly because Southampton don't sit deep. They do play a fairly high line, so there is space to get in behind the defense. So if Morata times his runs correctly, runs the channels correctly, he can find some joy in behind that defense. But I think I'm gonna wrap it up there. Chelsea winning two. Now, for those of you that watch my videos regularly, you'll know that my predictions are usually way out of rack. I usually predict like a 4-0, 6-1 Chelsea win, and rarely does that come off. So I'm gonna stay a little bit more conservative this time and say Chelsea win two 0 with somebody like Hazard, and uh, hopefully somebody like Giroud or Morata providing the bullets, and Chelsea uh, escaping with a narrow 2-0 win. Uh, do me a favor if you haven't already, hit that like button, that subscribe button, and if you're a real bad man, you will hit that bell notification button to keep up with the latest and the newest. I'm gonna be doing these after every game, uh, excluding, of course, the Europa League and uh, the cup games, because it's just too much work and I don't have that much time. But, uh, yeah, I look for these after every Premier League game. I'm gonna take this opportunity to shout out the Bayou City Blues and Alejandro, Jesus Alejandro Martinez for allowing me to post these videos on their page there. Uh, I checked out their site. They look like they have a great time down there. Lots of supporters having a great time. And I, I've known Jesus for a while now. He's been doing like, uh, he did Chelsea in America for a while and he's always an insightful poster there. He knows his stuff, and I don't think that the supporters in Texas are any different. They know the football down there. So if you do have, if you are like-minded and you want to congregate with uh, like-minded thinkers, real nutters, uh, make your way down to the King's Court, which is in Houston, and you can meet up with Alejandro and all the rest, and uh, have a few tastes with them there. And of course, us here in Toronto, I'm from Toronto, we uh, congregate at Batch, which is located at 75 Victoria Street. And if you want to become a member of the Toronto Blues, you could make yourself known to Alim, Sai, Shamez, Jay even, Jason. And uh, yeah, we're there every Sunday, every Saturday, midweek sometimes, although I was the only one there this midweek. Where were you guys? Uh, but uh, yeah, we're, we're always there, and it's always a good atmosphere there to enjoy the game. So until then, um, I'm gonna wrap it up there and let's go Blues. Let's get this three points and go into the international break. Another one, can you believe it? With three points. Go you Blues, come on up the Chelsea.